We are back in Michigan for the weekend and we've been driving the all new Lincoln, well it's not really all new anymore, it's been out for a little bit, but the Aviator Grand Touring, which means the plug-in hybrid. I've got a couple of my very good friends with me today, so this will be, yeah look, there's a Tillman. Uh, we're gonna check out the interior and details Ooh, and some of the other up. things. What? They're up. already distracting me already. Uh, of the Lincoln Aviator, so. This is a more informal behind the scenes vlog. I think I'll film one other video with this car, but I've been really liking this thing. We're currently hiding in a parking structure because, oh, it's here. There's a huge storm incoming. It started getting really windy, and now uh, I'll turn the camera around. Yeah, we're getting uh That's not always the best for filming. So, here we have the Aviator Hybrid. We'll check it out. I, I've been actually really liking this car. So I drove it from Chicago to Michigan. Uh, I attended a wedding this weekend, so it's filled with stuff. So I'll show you guys the cargo capacity. We'll talk about a, some of the features and what it was like to live with, and also just more specifically the details on the interior. Oh man, that rain is really coming down. So literally like three minutes ago, I was parked right there. Oh, it's blowing at me. Literally three minutes ago, we were parked out there. Yeah, we're not filming in this weather. Got the Lambo and the Shelby hiding there, but oh look, they popped the hood. So, three liter twin turbo V6 with, you see the high bright orange cabling, plug-in hybrid. So right up here we have the charging port. So it'll get decent electric range. I saw maybe like 15 miles on pure EV. The aviator script here is in blue. Same with the Front Lincoln lo logo of the badge up here. Oh, 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 and also, oh. it lights up, which is a little, I don't know if I like that actually. I love it. You love it? But, but you I'm also a have, sir. You also, also have an orange Lamborghini. So, yeah, but uh, I mean, it's, it lights up. It does light up. If it These, was RGB, it'd be even better. Oh my gosh, yeah. Would, it, would you want underglow on this too? Matt pointed out that it's a little Lincoln shape, the logo shape on the actual grill. That's a really cool yeah, design Lincoln touch badges. there. Yeah, the Lincoln badge is inside the grill. This color is called, let me pull the key out because it says on the key tag, uh, Ocean Drive Blue. I think it looks really cool. It's like a blue steel almost. Yeah, yeah. On the lighter tan interior, I think it works really well. Upgraded wheels. The Grand Touring is towards the upper tier. Uh, I think just below Black Label. And this is a Explorer essentially, right? It's an Explorer platform vehicle, so same dimensions and everything. But they did a great job completely changing it up. It doesn't really feel like an Explorer from uh, styling or interior or the way it drives. Got the big light bar out back, quad exhaust tips. This one sticker is for just over 84,000. I'll pull out the window sticker in a moment. Huge door handles. They have this little touch button behind it that unlocks and you enter. And you see the animations on the screen, both the digital cluster and the actual center infotainment screen here. The camera's making the screens look kind of stroby, but yeah, flying through the clouds. That's what Matt was just talking about. And then, I'm gonna turn it on. There it is. Woohoo! It makes very pleasing, like classical marimba piano noises. It's very calming. Um, it's Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Yeah, DSO recorded that. I remember, I remember learning about that. Okay, so we have a big center cluster here. Has very nice. Quit! Everybody's opening and closing the doors, and it keeps telling me doors are ajar. This is what happens when um, my friend helps. Hey! <laughs> okay, so right here we have the center sync screen, which is like losing its mind on this camera feed. Oh my gosh! But uh, I've been running CarPlay pretty much the whole time. It has CarPlay and Android Auto. Now the lift gate is ajar. Guys, stop it! Uh, we have some interior ambient lighting. The seat controls are here. These are like the thirty. I think they're thirty way, right? 30-way adjustable seats, which means you can uh, yes. like change -way. everything. This little button the toggles the back, the headrest, the little front uh, leg extension nice. things. We do have uh, massage seats on the front. You press that button, and the massage seat controls open for the driver and passenger, which are fantastic. I, I very much massage seats make everything better. Uh, coming down here, you have the Park Reverse Neutral Drive. It's not full Prindle, which is Prind because there's no low range, but these are nice little toggle button things. They feel nice. Like They're, piano keys. Yo, yeah. I can feel the car moving as I go between the transmission selector. Uh, we have actual physical buttons for your climate control, which is nice. Heated and cooled front seats. And then there's a little touchscreen back there. I'll show you guys. Heated and cooled second row captain's chairs. Volume controls, a little rotary dial thingamajig knob for your airspeed. Uh, some cup holders. Ooh, ambient lighting. And uh, right here is where my phone's plugged in. More storage. We have a drive mode. 
Yes, I'm gonna go change drive modes now. Look at these graphics, they're really nice, it's really pretty. Preserve EV, save and charge battery for later. Excite, although it is still a very heavy 6,000 pound SUV, so excitement is to an, I mean, a reasonable amount. Conserve, but look at those, they're so pretty. Very also nicely done. The layout, I think, the change. The gauges, you so can I change it. Deep conditions. No, that's really cool animation there. No, I think the gauges. You can change gauges elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's buttons here on the steering wheel. This one really toggles through your different drive modes and or uh, your menu settings. So you'll see a combined 22.5 mpg. 121 was electric, um, but the efficiency isn't crazy when you're doing long distances and not plugging in all the time. There's a calm screen, which I think is kind of funny too. It just pretty much shows nothing. Yep, there's the calm screen. There's uh, these little toggles on the steering wheel to go between different settings. And also, I like this. Originally, I thought something was wrong because your cruise control buttons and things aren't lit up. You can't see that right now because cruise control is off. Once you turn it on, they light up to how to set your cruise control, your distances. This says Copilot 360 1.5, that's what it's called? 1.5, I'm not sure. Yeah, because it has adaptive cruise and everything and lane keep. So this one is and like the one centering. point. Lane centering, yeah. So this is the slightly upgraded one. Whoa, traction control is off because I'm in deep snow mode. Let's go back to normal before I go do donuts in the ring. Um, so yeah, the steering wheel is nice. We have paddle shifters. Uh, turn signals back there. The start stop button is completely horizontal on this top face. We have open pour wood. You can feel the texture of the grain. Nice quality there. Yeah, it runs across the center dash. And then this, took me a second to notice, this is the voice control. Like if you hold it and you have CarPlay on, that's what pulls up Siri. It's on the actual steering wheel. Usually there's somewhere in this cluster part, but here they have it on the little protrusion on the steering wheel, which I thought was cool. Revel audio system. Whoops, there we go. Uh, Lincolns have had these for a bit now. They sound pretty good. The button here to open the door, it's all electronic. It threw a lot of my friends off. They like couldn't figure it out. People who haven't been in newer cars, so they're like, they literally were looking at the door, not sure what button to press to get out, but there's an electronic button there. People who are in a lot of cars like us, figure that out very quickly. If I remember correctly, you mentioned the door handles. I think on it's so you can reach with a glove on. Oh, cause it's not touch or like, it's an actual little latchy button. button thing. Yeah. yeah. It's nice, I don't mind it. No soft closed doors though. We have a panoramic sunroof, which is looking at the roof of a parking garage because it's pouring rain outside. Second row captain's chairs, third row is full of my cargo. So um, what else is there up here? I think we've covered almost all of it. We have surround view cameras. This will also park itself. So Stop we could try that. Hey Tillman. Oh, you no, can see you can see Tillman and you can see the giant heads up display. Look how wide that is and how much information. We've got the fuel range, your uh, the time, the temperature, your speed. It's it's really nice. The heads up display brings a lot of information. This car will also park itself. I have not tested it yet. So uh, let's try it. So we press I think this button. Navigate to parking. Navigate to parking. No, active park assist. Can this do it? Oh, this is not gonna work because these are angled spaces. Um, I don't know if I want this thing to actually try this. I'm worried now. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, I've tested these before when I was working at Ford a long time ago and I'm sure they've advanced, but uh, it has 360 overhead view and surround view cameras. I promise you they aren't strobing like this in real life. That is simply the camera frame rate versus the screen's refresh rate or whatever the technical term is. That's why it looks that way. Steve and Matt's cars live live a day. Yeah, but it's angled, so, from, so I don't think it likes it. So from what I know about Active Park Assist, having worked on it for a little while, yeah? it can't do diagonal parking. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you should have told me that before I started trying it and risking the life of your cars. At least I mean, you, you have insurance. <laughs> Second row has captain's chairs. So, and they actually slide back, so I think we're all the way back here. And, no wait, maybe not. There we go. Look at how much more legroom you get. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty comfortable. We have the touch screen here that controls the back seats so they can both be heated and cooled. No massage for the second row seats. Climate control. We have air quality. Auto air refresh. The, I don't even know what that means. PM 2.5 of eight of something micrograms per meter cubed. Stop shaking the car. <laughs> Um, auto air filter? refresh. Yeah, the climate control system is filtering cabin air, which probably isn't doing much with the entire, all the doors open. That's really cool. Uh, audio is locked because 
friends were in the back seat messing with my audio. And we have, this is this is really cool. You guys are children. Quit it. We have two different optional center consoles too. And Ooh, I think that's I cool. can control the Whoa! I can control that so I can get rid of Alex Tillman. You can control your your uh, panoramic sunroof shade from the back seat. Well, I can make it close all the way too. That's really cool. That is a nice touch. Now I don't need to see Alex Tillman on the roof of my car. My friends are children. I apologize to the audience. Let's see. This center console here makes it harder to get into the third row, which is filled with cargo. But if we hop our way out, oh, that's really cool. 408, and you are zooming through the sky. That is the time. All right. To get to the third row, you have a button here. You press that, and the seat angles forward, slides forward, and you can very easily get to the third row. We currently have the third row folded down because there are piles of stuff. Um, otherwise, maybe later today when I get home, I will empty the car out and test the back row seat. How do I put the seat back? I did this earlier. No, I just pulled it back. I was being weak. Oh, it has privacy shields. Nice. Yeah. See, now you can't see Matt as much anymore. Privacy. <laughs> so we have kick the open lift gate. So you go right here, kick your foot, and the lift gate does not open. Oh, because the car's on, isn't it? Matt, can you turn it off? <laughs> the button to open it is off center on the Lincolns. It's right there. Backup camera, the end plate, because this vehicle is from Lincoln. Now we'll try it. Kick. There we go, see? Demonstration successful. Third row, uh, once you fold it up, you have two seats. It does not have privacy shields. It does so. not. Steve was wrong. I was. Um, it's wrong company. But it's, uh, you can't really tell. I have a lot of stuff back here. But it's it's pretty spacious. I mean, it took all of that. You can see a Pelican case hiding there. Uh, and then up here, something I noticed. The lock button, on some cars, you hit the lock button, and it closes and locks the lift gate. This one, pressing the lock button, doesn't do anything. You have to press the lock button, and then the lift gate button. Then it closes and locks the car. I'm a big fan of how the DRL slowly fades on when you unlock the aviator. It's a really cool touch, and when you lock it, it fades away in the other direction. It just makes it seem a little classier. It will sense my approach, and the lights will turn on to greet me, which is a really nice touch. I hope this actually works for this demonstration. If not, I'll do it later tonight. There we go, see, lights up, and there should be, a, oh, it's too light out here. You will get this nice puddle lamp. I'll show that at night. So some of the things I really liked about the Aviator, I think it looks really sharp, it's very comfortable, the interior is impressive, it makes a lot of power. 630 combined pound feet of torque and 494 horsepower, so when you need it to, there is a, just a mountain of torque in this very quick. Things that I didn't like about it, it's very, very heavy. This is like 600 plus pounds heavier than the non-plug-in hybrid Aviator with the same 3 liter turbocharged uh, V6. Um, that's a lot of weight, it's almost 6,000 pounds, and when you're not plugging in a bunch for like short term drives, your efficiency isn't that great. I had it plugged in going back and forth from work and I averaged 999.99 mpg. That was, that's what the car showed me. But when I'm driving on the freeway, I haven't plugged this in in three, four days at this point. It's only averaging low 20s. I think I saw like 22.6, uh, maybe getting up to 23, 24 on the freeway. That's just because it's so heavy, it, it's big, and when the plug in hybrid system can't be doing much of it, it's not the most efficient out there. This one option for just around 84 grand is a good amount of money, but it has a lot of great features. The driver assistance stuff, the interior, the sound system, the massage seats. It's impressed a lot of people. It is without a doubt the best Lincoln I have ever been in. Probably my favorite Lincoln, and that's including the huge Navigator. I just, I really like this Aviator. I think the size, the tech, the appearance, I was a big fan of that. The plug-in hybrid is cool. I think I should try out just a regular non-plug-in hybrid for day to day. Um, unless you have charging access easily and you're doing a lot of short-term drives, I think the regular one might be a better bet. Otherwise, there's a quick uh, view at the Aviator. I'll keep filming a couple other clips and maybe splice them in there and I will film one other video with the Aviator, but wanted to take a chance to share that. It's been a really busy week driving the car, but I've put a good amount of miles on it. I really, really like it. Quite impressive. First time finally checking out one of the newer generation of Lincolns. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. It's darker now so you can see how the light show turns on. The logo, the DRLs, and you can just see the projected puddle lamp, little carpet welcome mat on the side. When it's dark out, it's very easy to see. The Lincoln logo there, that's a nice touch. It's really cool how they gradually turn on the front lights. And the, I actually don't know if the logo illuminates when you're driving. To see another one on the road. Lock it, does the opposite. The lights gradually fade away. Look at that, that's nice.